very good evening today's session we go see the excretory system okay so over of this today's session is going to be what is excretory system what is the excretory organ structure of the kidney gross anatomy of kidney blood supply nerve supply then uh, structural and functional unit of kidney urine formation maturation reflex and function of the kidney Okay, so first we'll see what is an excretory system. So excretory system is a passive biological system that removes the excess of unnecessary material from the body fluids. Okay, so excretory is uh, one where we're going to excrete all the unwanted molecules from the cells due to due to the process of uh, metabolism. And due to the process of uh, uh, release of energy or production of your ATP, uh, the unwanted materials like uh, urea, uh, then ammonia, then some of the byproducts of uh, sulfate, phosphate. So, like these materials has been excreted or produced by the cells during the time of metabolic activity. So, these materials has to be excreted from the body or from the cell which is uh, very much unnecessary for the uh, cell which affects the cell in future so these things will be excreted out by the cell in the bloodstream <coughs> excuse me this bloodstream will uh, bring all these uh, materials to the excretory organ where your uh, materials is going to be excreted out from the blood cell okay it helps in entering the intrachemical hemostasis and prevent the damage to the body as well. the dual function of the excretory system is the elimination of waste product of metabolism and the drain the uh, drain the body of used up and broken down components in the liquid and gaseous state in humans these substances leaves the body as urine and also expel, uh, expel them through sweat helium uh, the ureter and the renal vein exits the kidney and the renal artery enters. Hilum is the place where your ureter has as well as your, your renal vein as well as your renal artery enters your kidney. Right. So in our body there are two excretory, excretory organs. One is going to be your uh, kidney and the one is going to be your skin where uh, your uh, skin also plays a major role in excretion of your sweat gland with some of the uh, salts content but what the thing is the kidney is the major one and uh, sweat glands will be activate only during the time of summer season or during the time of vacation period or during the time of uh, nervousness okay so the major part or major portion is the kidney which going to plays a major role in the excretion of urine in the winter season during the summer season uh, your waste products are uh, due to the temperature external temperature our body has to maintain the uh, normal temperature the body temperature that is we call it as a hemostasis uh, where this this the external atmospheric temperature will be more when compared to your body temperature and this has to be controlled by uh, sweat glands which going to sweat and going to maintain the temperature whereas the winter season there won't be any sweating of uh, uh, sweats sweating of sweats because uh, uh, because the uh, temperature already the uh, uh, external temperature is going to be very less and the body heat it should not uh, become too cold so it won't uh, sweat in the winter season and during the winter season we can see we will urinate frequently than in the summer season intake of water also will be more in the summer season than in the winter season okay so which is going to be an excretory organ in human a pair of kidney and the gland in the skin are the main excretory organ kidney are larger bean shaped so we can see the uh, beans okay especially if you buy the double beans it just look like your kidney shape where you're going to uh, layer is going to be concave and inner is going to be convex uh, convex shape the bean shaped organ which are present on either side of your vertebral column in the dominant cavity the human has two kidneys and each kidney is supplied with the blood from the renal artery so the uh, the main art, uh, main iota, 
which is emerges out from your heart will continue till the kidney and from there it will directly get branches out and the artery ren the artery which enter into the pair of kidney where uh, we call it as a renal artery and same likewise the inferior vena cava the inferior vena cava the vein which emerges out from the two kidneys which we call as a renal vein joins to this vena cava and go back to the heart for the uh, oxygen or the gaseous exchange kidney has all the nitrogenous waste such as urea as well as the salts excess water from the body from the body through blood and excreted in the form of urine that's what uh, we should always uh, uh, in a minimum 5 liters to 6 liters of water per day even during this winter season so why because uh, uh, our kidney is going to do is fledgly physiology daily and it's going to excrete the urine Uh, and the color of the urine should be always in pale yellow it should not be in dark yellow that means if you are getting a dark yellow that means you are uh, consumption of water very very less because uh, kidney strains more if the consumption of water is less the uh, kidney strains more to filter all this uh, material and uh, sometimes sometimes these materials are combined together may and might be uh, form as a stone also in the kidney a uh, uh, doctor used to suggest doing that uh, in case of stone patients they they ask drink lot of water even the tender coconut which is very good for the health and the kidney too okay the filtrated blood is carried away from kidney by the renal vein so the diagram you can able to see so this is going to be your uh, renal vein okay the blue color always i said when the, when i uh, uh, discussing about the respiratory system always the deoxygenated will be will used to show in blue color and ox blood will show in the uh, red color that's what this is going to be your uh, renal vein and red color is going to be your renal artery and from there we can see the outer layer of the the outer layer of the kidney we call it as uh, capsule excuse me right i can zoom it out the outer layer of the kid called as capsule and the next one you going to the next layer we call it as medulla see so you can find out the uh, medulla and we can see the major calyx and minor calyx and uh, the uh, after next to the capsule we going to have cortex region so, uh, capsule is the outer covering of the kidney and cortex region is the outer layer and the inner layer is going to be your medulla okay and we going to have major calyx and minor calyx and finally it gets open into your uh, pelvic to form a ure ure uh, pelvic junction and from there urethra will be arising so this is the place okay so uh, this is the place where your uh, ureter as well as your uh, veins and artery will emerges out in the kit okay right now now we going to see the structure of kidney so kidney is a two bean sheet, as i said earlier organ found on the vertebrates the located on the turn right in the retino peritoneal space so retino peritoneal space in sense uh, you can uh, uh, you can you do, do the cross section of your abdomen from the top you can able to see the space around the space from the top you can able to see the space uh, around kidney you can find this from the top view uh, this is the front view when you go to the top view you can find out the space around the kidney kidney alone where the kidney will be 
be located so that space we call it as a retinoperitoneal space like a heart has been fixed in the space between the lungs we call it as a um, uh, media stand and likewise here the peri uh, retinoperitoneal space the space just around the when you see the cross section on the top view of the uh, abdominal cavity you can find out the space in adult human uh, uh, are uh, 12 cm or approximately it going to be 4 and 1/2 inches in length which receives the blood from the pad renal artery okay so as is uh, this this going to be your uh, emerges out directly from aorta this is going to be uh, directly emerges from aorta and is going to get branch and here it will be turned into the kidney and this is going to be your inferior vena cava where uh, the veins the renal vein will be emerging out from the kidney and goes to the vena cava whereas here from aorta the oxygenated blood will enter into the uh, kidney and uh, enter the kidney to the pelvic for both the kidneys uh, it's, it's applicable for both the kidneys enter into the both the kidneys as well as the vena cava leave from the both the kidneys and goes to the uh, heart for the the purification process for the oxygen gas exchanges so the blood exit into the bad renal vein so uh, it receives the blood from the renal artery and the deoxygenated blood will be receives the bad renal vein knees attached to the ureter a tube that carries the excreted urine to the bladder so this is what this is a tube this is a tube which going to carry the uh, excreted uh, urine with uh, enormous amount of water and which going to collected in elastic bag called as ureter okay so this is a uh, called this tube is called as ureter and it's going to carry the uh, urine it's get uh, 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 collected, it's get collected in the elastic bag called the urinary bladder. Okay, so here the urine is going to get collected in the urinary bladder. The right kidney is being slightly lower than the uh, left kidney. This is why, because of the position of the space occupied by the liver. So liver is the is a uh, organ which is present uh, just in the abdomen on the right side. So due to presence of the liver your right kidney is somewhat slight that's lower than your left kidney and the size is also going to get uh, vary between your right and left kidney right so next going to see a cross anatomy of the kidney so the parenchyma of the kidney is into two major structures the outer renal cortex and inner renal medulla okay so as i said in the previous slide the outer layer we call the uh, both uh, on the whole the kidney is covered with a capsule and the outer layer we call this cortex and the inner we call it as a medulla structure takes the shape of 8 to 18 cone shaped ring lobes so it depends upon this one the triangle shape okay cone shaped which is called as a uh, renal lobes we call it as a renal lobes and uh, this is going to be our cortex region and uh, we we call this as a medullary region okay then uh, we are going to have pelvic okay then uh, renal vein renal artery as i said and this is going to be our uh, pelvic space okay then we going to have a major calyx and minor calyx these are the minor calyx and this is going to be major calyx where your urine is going to get collected and it's going to excreted out and this is a small thing which we are uh, uh, if is going to see in the mobile it will be difficult to view and we in neck we can't able to see this okay this is going to be a nephron okay so just uh, for uh, understanding they are mentioned in the diagram but through neck we can't able to view the nephron so each renal lobes contain a renal cortex surrounding a portion of the medulla called as the renal pyramid the papilla of each uh, pyramid empties the urine into the minor calyx first all the uh, uh, all the collecting tubules of the uh, nephron will be entering into a minor calyx okay so from the so the from the urine which is collected through the collecting tubules will be entering into the minor calyx then it will be uh, it will be entering into the calyx and uh, empty into the renal pelvics 
so the papilla each uh, pyramid empties the urine into the minor calyx this minor calyx t again empty into the major calyx and the major calyx empty into the anal pelvis where your your ureter is going to emerge out uh, this because of the uh, ureter and the further uh, extension of the uh, pelvis is going to be a ureter and that ureter is going to carry the the urinary bladder next blood supply so even the kidney is a vital organ it also needs energy it also needs all the nutrients how these energies and nutrients will be supplied through blood so the blood supply the blood circulation consists of two the renal artery and renal vein same artery and same vein what we discussed from the beginning the renal artery so this is going to carry the deoxygenated blood to the kidney as well as all the uh, what all waste uh, materials which has been uh, uh, which has been excreted by the uh, blood through renal efferent arteries or efferent efferent artery okay so through that artery it enters into the kidney and what a exchange of gases also takes place exchange of nutrients is also takes place in the uh, kidney and the uh, deoxygenated blood will be comes out through your uh, renal vein okay so the oxidated blood will be entering the kidney with along with all the uh, materials which has to be excreted and enters into the kidney as well as into the uh, glomerul uh, glomerulus of the nef and where the oxygen exchange takes place and even the metabolic waste product is also uh, uh, it's also excreted or transported the artery and and the, uh, the deoxygenated blood all the waste will out and it get purify also because it, it, this is the organ which going to purify all the metabolic waste so it going to absorb all the uh, waste metals and uh, uh, especially the creatinine urea and like that materials and which will be uh, diluted with the water and that water will emerges out through the pelvis into the urine okay so the renal artery kidney receives actually 20% of uh, cardiac output will be received by the kidney uh, because it's a major organ which is which going to be a vital role for the purification and excretion of a toxic material so the uh, 20% of your cardiac output will be excreted will be reach the kidney so kidney receives the blood from the renal artery left and right which branches directly from the abdominal aorta that's what in the previous slide i will be explaining so from the abdominal aorta it's going to get branched directly into left and right uh, uh, renal artery for left and right kidney okay the renal uh, kidney receives approximately 20% of the cardiac output the renal artery branches into segment as arteries and divided further into intratubular intratubular arteries okay so intra intralobular arteries then supply the blood to the adequate arteries then then run through the boundaries of the cortex and the medulla you can able to find out the diagram so here you can able to see okay runs on the cortex and the medulla the blood will get circulated the intralobular arteries okay intralobular arteries then supplies the uh, arcuate arteries that and runs over the boundary of the cortex and the medulla so each great arteries supply several intralobular arteries that fit into the afferent arterioles that supplies your glomerulus so glomerulus we can able to see the glomerulus in the kidney uh, when you going to see the structure of your nephron at that you can you like at the time i can show you the glomerulus where you are uh, uh, arterioles going to afferent and efferent arterioles going to emerge out uh, in and out from the glomerulus right so here you can see from the abdominal aorta from the abdominal aorta goes to renal artery then segmented renal uh, segmental artery then intralobular artery then arcuate artery then uh, intralobular intralobular and afferent arterioles then to the glomerulus then to the glomerulus okay and then uh,
then you have glomerulus then to the end arterioles and from there it went to them it uh, goes to the uh, vasa recta vasa recta in sense vasa recta in sense uh, it going to join into the uh, what is it uh, vena cava okay so the vasa recta then here pre tubular capillary from there it comes to pre tubular capillaries and then and then uh, from there it's going to be intratubular vein and from there is going to be intratubular vein then uh, auricular vein then intratubular vein and renal vein that into inferior vena cava okay so renal vein after filtration occurs the blood moves through the small network of small vein these veins cover into intratubular vein then intratubular vein provides the blood to the auricular vein then back to the intralobular vein which comes to from the renal vein which exits the kidney ultimately into a inferior vena cava so already we asked about the uh, this is going to be our uh, artery which is going to supply the oxygen blood and this is going to be a deoxygenated blood which is going to carry the, all the uh, uh, deoxygenated blood from the kidney to the heart for the purification okay next the nerve supply the nerve supply the nervous system communicate via the renal pelvix okay that to the the center for the uh, uh, urinary the center and the pons of the middle oblongata uh, where uh, you are your reflexes will be taking place the input from the sympathetic nervous system trigger the vasoconstriction of the kidney thereby reducing the renal blood flow so during the time of uh, this always uh, the autonomic nervous system will play a major role in the uh, vital organs so likewise in kidney also it plays a major role the sympathetic para, uh, sympathetic uh, uh, nervous system the sympathetic nervous system spot is going to uh, trigger the vasoconstriction of the kidney to reduce the renal blood why because due to that uh, constriction of the blood the blood vessel the flow will be less due to the flow uh, due to the less flow the urine formation is also less due to the flow of uh, blood the kidney also receives an input from parasympathetic activity uh, obvious going to be a uh, vasodilation vasodilation uh, parasympathetic nerve system by way of the renal branches of the vagus nerve so the vital organ uh, lungs then uh, heart and the kidney so everything has been connected to a parasympathetic nerve called as vagus nerve uh, the uh, 10th cranial nerve okay right so the parasympathetic activity what happens going to uh, relax or it going it going it going to the just opposite uh, action of your sympathetic nervous system so vasodilation will be taking place so due to the circulation will be more and the uh, filtration is also be more the urine formation also increases right the structural and functional unit of the kidney so the structural and functional unit of a kidney we call it as a nephron so neph is the microscopic structure and the functional unit of the kidney composed of renal corpuscles and their renal tubules so renal corpuscles consist of a, a tuft of capillaries called as glomerulus okay so uh, i'll show the next diagram the next slide as it told i want to show in uh, large uh, bigger size so if i show in small you can can't able to see and you can't able to understand that so i had uh, uh, have a separate slide itself so the renal capsule consists of a tuft of capillaries which is glomerulus this uh, glomerulus will enter into a uh, bowel like cavity uh, called as bowman's capsule where you are all the in the uh, and your friend arterioles will be emerging out where your blood is going to carry all the materials and the filtration will be taking place in this junction okay the the adult has 1 to 1.5 millions of nephron in each kidney so in a pair of kidney a human a human being going to have two or three millions of nephrons in uh, in both the kidneys the five main parts of a nephron is going to be as i said the glomerulus capsule 
okay then the second one is going to be a box a proximal convoluted tube or in short form we can call it as a pct then loop of henley or henley's loop and next one is going to distal convoluted tubule and the final one is going to be a collecting duct okay we will see the diagram why so this is a structural and functional unit of our kid so this part we call it as a glomerulus capsule okay and uh, uh, from the renal artery you see from the renal artery the efferent arterioles will emerging into the glomerulus capsule this one we call this some uh, tough tough capillaries we call uh, glomerulus okay this is we called as a glomerulus the tough tough capillaries and from there it has been emerging out uh, with the, the, all the filtered uh, material and this blood the efferent artery going to have the uh, blood which going to contain all the toxic substances like tannin urea um, then um, uh, potassium calcium and uh, an excess amount of water and after getting filter what happen uh, sub uh, the blood which comes out here is going to have all the uh, waste products has been excreted and this blood doesn't have any excretion uh, any any waste product in the blood so the afferent arterioles this afferent uh, the blood the blood vessel which enters is parent and the blood vessel which emerges out is going to be afferent okay so then uh, here why we having the tuft of capillaries cut off of capillary in sense it going to have some a uh, lot of folding just like your small intestine it going to have lot of foldings and foldings and foldings why because why uh, god has created that foldings at uh, tuft of capillary sense this will increase the surface area okay so while we stretching out uh, if in case if the blood vessel enters and comes out uh, immediately in sense the blood enters the bowman's capsule and comes out immediately in sense yes, the surface area will be very less when it is going to have a tuft of capillaries this area will be more the filtration will be more and the uh, filtration of the materials also be more so due to that uh, purpose what the god has created a tuft of capillaries even the intestine the small intestine will also the same uh, Uh, meaning same that because small is going to have a lot of foldings in the small intestine, which makes of absorption of water. Uh, when we see the digestive system at the time, we can discuss about that in deep. Okay, so next part is going to be PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. So next uh, thing is going to be this is this part is going to be your proximal convoluted tubule, for it's going to form the. Uh, it's going to be present in between your bowman's capsule and uh, henley's loop okay so the part after the bowman's capsule is going to be acting out as a proximal convoluted tube it's going to be convoluted it's going to be bend and bend then next part is going to have a, a u shaped tube which we which we can able to see a u shaped uh, a u shaped tube which you can see it's a henley loop or uh, loop of henley the scientists who find out about this uh, loop is henley that's what it said as a name Hen uh, henley's or loop of henley here the counter current action will be taking place on the absorption so you can able to find out some uh, uh, blood vessel will be running around this henley loop why because it it is helpful during the time of reabsorption of the uh, material which well i explained you the time of your information okay then uh, it's followed the henley loop is followed by an another uh, uh, convolution of uh, uh, convolution of the tubule which we called as a distal <coughs> distal convoluted tube which we called as dct this is going to be your distal convoluted tubule okay so this is the next part of your kidney so bowman capsule followed by proximal convoluted tubule followed by a henley loop then followed by a distal convoluted tubule and the final one is going to be a collecting duct this is going to be your collecting duct where where uh, uh, many uh, branches of your uh, nephrons 
many brands of your digital color tool of different different nephrons will be joining here you can see you can see the branches which has been mentioned so this is the continuation of the digital color tool of the next uh, neighboring nephrons where your urine is going to collect it by this tube and enters into the uh, pelvic of your kidney so this is the structure of your kidney so most probably i think i have been covered all the parts of your uh, uh, nephron renal capsule uh, bowman's capsule is uh, commonly called as renal capsule then afferent efferent arterioles then proximal canal tubule loop of enli and we're going to have descending limb and ascending limb of loop of enli then uh, then pretubular Larys, which surrounds this loop of Enli, the limbs of loop or loop of Enli, the middle coronary tubule, then collecting tubules, and finally to the collecting duct, which emerges out to the pelvis for the urine collection. Okay, right. Right. So Bowman capsule. So what happens in the Bowman's capsule? So uh, collect collected the fluid from the filter capillaries of the glomerular tuft. Tuft. Happen the blood which is going to carry here the filtration going to start here Bowman's capsule where the Bowman's capsule is lined by a semi permeable membrane uh, which going to have which going to have some pores and which going to filter the uh, all toxic substances from the blood with water the filtering structure has three layers composed of uh, endothelial cells a basement membrane so glomerular uh, filtration barrier they will call it as a glomerular filter barrier where your filtration is going to be takes place next is going to be a proximal polluted tubule so beginning from the renal pole of the Bowman's capsule uh, to be the beginning of and and the beginning of your loop of air so the proximal connective tubule as I explained the diagram is going to present in between Bowman's capsule and the uh, 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 this thing descending limb of your uh, Henley's loop then the beginning of the renal uh, uh, I think this repeated the same point has been repeated. Then the loop of Enli of Enli is the portion of the nephron that uh, leads from the proximal convoluted tubule to the distal convoluted tubule. So it is present in between your proximal convoluted tubule as well as in, in, in between proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule. The convoluted tubules uh, counter current multi multiplayer system so this is the important uh, the convoluted tubules the u-shaped tubule the tube going to play a counter current multiplayer system which use the ultralight pumps and the loop of enli uh, creates an area of high urea concentration deep in the medulla so this um, uh, loop of enli going to play the major role in absorption of the urea and it's going to that too in the process of the counter current uh, propagation and then it consists of series of tubules and ducts that uh, physio uh, physiologically connect the nephron to a major calyx and directly to the next to the minor calyx and to the renal pelvis okay uh, right and coming back to the same diagram, this is uh, uh, in the diagram. Right. So next is distal convoluted tubule. After your Henley's loop, we're going to see the distal convoluted tubule. Front between the loop of Henley and the collecting tube, we call it as a distal convoluted tubule. Partly responsible for the regulation of potassium, sodium, calcium, and also your pH, maintaining the pH of your blood, especially. Okay. Then it's going to be a collecting duct. It's going to consist of a series of tubules and the duct that uh, phys physically connects the nephrons to the minor calyx or directly into the renal pelvic. Sometimes it sometimes uh, some of the uh, nephrons will the collecting duct of the nephrons will be entering into the uh, minor calyx and some may be directly entering into the uh, pelvic uh, renal pelvic where your urine is going to get collected each and every. Nephron. So this is the start of nephron uh, we are discussed. Next, we are going to see the types of nephron. There are two types of nephron present in our kidney. Uh, one is going to be called as cortical nephron, and other one is called as a jexa, jexa medullary nephron. 
So, what's the main difference? What's the difference between the cortical nephron and gestural nephron in sense? Just the presence of your endless lobe in the region of cortex as well as the medulla. So, in the uh, in cortical nephron, what happens? The endless loop as well as the nephron will be the major part of your endless loop it will lies or the full part of the endless loop will lies in the cortical region of your kidney itself then it is called as a uh, cortical nephron whereas the jexa medullary nephron uh, the major portion of your endless loop will be lying in the medullary region of the kidney then we call it as a uh, jexa medullary nephron so in the diagram you can able to see okay this is going to be our cortical nephron where the major part, portion of a nephron lies and the only the main thing is endless loop the only a fraction of uh, endless loop will be entered sometimes there won't be the full endless loop will be present cortical region itself then it is called as a cortical nephron where is the medullary nephron the major portion of your uh, endless loop it lies in the medullary region of a kidney that's we called as the uh, medullary just juxta medullary nephron so the kidney consists of two types of nephron each located in different parts of the renal cortex first one is going to be a cortical nephron and second one is going to be a jexamedullary nephron the cortical nephron the majority of the nephron starts in the cortex and have a short loop of endly which does not penetrate deeply into the medulla or sometimes it might be present outside the medulla 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 jexta medullary nephron uh, starts low in the cortex near, uh, near the medullary and have a long endless loop uh, which penetrate deeply into the renal medullary uh, portion of your kidney so the major difference between these two the so next slide we are going to see the urine formation a very important uh, topic urine formation how the urine is formed urine formation uh, is done by three uh, phase or three process or three steps first one is going to be a glomerular filtration second one is going to be a tubular reabsorption and third one is going to be a secretion okay so what happened the glomerular when when i uh, used to teach the uh, uh, urine formation i used to compare how to prepare a tea in your home so just like that the uh, we how are you going to prepare a tea in your home we're going to have a milk and we're going to add some uh, sugar then we're going to have some uh, tea flavor to the milk then uh, if possible uh, we're going to have a uh, 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 this one, elachi. Uh, then, uh, if need, they will add some uh, other ingredients. If want, you can add it. So that uh, whole uh, liquid, okay, the preparation of tea, the whole liquid we call, uh, we can resemble here as a blend. So the blend which going to have the, we can compare sugar molecule as the glucose within the blend and uh, uh, like uh, uh, catenin as. Uh, uh, what as uh, that uh, saw tea dust like that we can compare with your preparation of tea so what we going to do why we going to uh, first step after you're going to boil everything is well going to filter we can't able to drink the tea as it is because it going to have the waste product in that and that should have to be filtered and that should have been aerated so same thing has been done but here uh, what we feel is going to be a pure tea whereas in the nephron what you filter the uh, is going to be urine okay that we that we won't be have that we won't we won't be uh, uh, taken by the blood it will be excreted by the uh, nephron okay so while we filtering what happened some kills of uh, because based upon the pore size of your uh, uh, semi permanent present in the glomerulus okay some uh, the pore size of your uh, uh, creatinine the size of a creatinine will be more when compared to your uh, uh, some of your glucose molecule so what happens is during the time of filtration while filtering your uh, creatinine molecule some of the glucose molecules some of the uh, essential uh, 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 molecules also get filtered and uh, this uh, filtered will be reabsorbed that's what the first step is going to be glomerular filtration in glomerular filtration around 30 percent of your uh, uh, blood will be get filtered and the 
uh, remain the filtrate which comes out from the Bowman's capsule will have some essential material, essential components or molecules also. So these molecules have to be reabsorbed. Okay, and sometimes some toxic substance which cannot be entered through the glomerular filtration has to be uh, secreted by the tube. Secretion is going to be secreted inside your uh, uh, nephron, which has to be excreted out from the uh, nephron. So this is the process which is going to take place. In the diagram, we can able to see the number one is going to be filtration process. We call it as a glomerular filtration. Number two, we call it as a reabsorption, tubular reabsorption. So you see here, here, here some of the particles is going to be reabsorbed from your uh, nephron to the blood vessel. It's going to reabsorb. Example, some of the nutrients, some of the glucose molecules, some proteins if it is escaped. Okay. Then, uh, third one is going to be tubular secretion. Some toxic substances, for example, if you're going to take some steroids or some medicines, these uh, toxic substances has to be excreted. What happened? The tubular the secretion will be taking place from the uh, blood, the tubules to the uh, nephron. Then finally, it's going to be excreted. Okay, finally, it's going to be excreted out. Uh, so this is the main uh, uh, process in the urine formation. Then the urine urinary excretion rate equal to the filtration rate minus reabsorption rate plus secretion rate is going to be your urine filtration or urinary excretion rate. The word excretion with to the urinary system is urination. So the final thing what is going to be collected in a elastic bag, bag called as urinary bladder and going to create a uh, pissing effect or the maturation and really we are going to uh, pass pass the urine out through itra. Okay. The renal clearance is also conventionally called as the excretion. Renal clearance or the pissing or uh, uh, maturation. These are the medical terms, medical words which we use to, to, for the excretion of urine. Okay. Right, glomerular filtration. So each nephron begins in the renal capsule, which is composed of a glomerular enclosed with the Bowman's capsule. The cell, protein, and other larger molecules are filtered out of the glomerulus by process of called as filtration, which in terms it is called as ultrafiltration. Okay, the ultrafiltrate is passed through in terms the proximal convoluted tubule the Henley's loop and distal connective tubule and a series of collecting ducts for the form for the urine formation. The transport process are driven by uh, starling force. Very this process, this transport of that molecule is done by the starling force and diffusion and active transport. So these three transport taking place in the glomerular filtration. The starling force, diffusion and then uh, active trust based upon the molecule concentration based upon the molecule these three the transport process will be taking place in the glomerular filtration right next is tubular reabsorption so tubular reabsorption is a process by which the solutes and water are removed from the tubular fluid and transported into the Blood. Okay, so the some of the solutes, uh, sol solutes in sense, some salts, uh, some chilled salts like uh, a small quantity of your sodium. Likewise, these things to be reabsorbed, and especially enormous amount of water will be get filtered, and the same amount of water cannot be excreted. So some uh, quantity of water will be reabsorbed or removed from that uh, uh, nephron, and it be absorbed by the tubular reabsorption and from the tubular fluid and transported into the blood. <coughs> Reabsorption is of two process beginning with active extraction and passive extraction. So substance from the tubular fluid enters into the renal uh, intestinium and transport of this substance from the intestinium into the bloodstream. The transport process are driven by uh, starling force, diffusion and active transport. So again, these three main transports again use the tubular reabsorption for reabsorbing the uh, essential materials or molecules. 
the last step in formation is going to be your tubular secretion the tubular secretion occurs simultaneously during the reabsorption of the filtrate so two these two processes will be going hand in hand okay so these two processes will run uh, simultaneously will be taking is yes. uh, the substance generally produced by the body or by the product cell metabolism that can be toxic in higher concentration so uh, due to the uh, metabolic activity by the cell the toxic substance be entering into the absorbed again into the into the uh, that uh, nephron for the excretion sometimes the uh, antibiotics which we going to intake so these uh, these antibiotics also be going to be uh, secreted inside your uh nephron or the generally uh, through on the proximal carotid tubule where tubular secretion is going to take place which should not be inside the body and some of the substances uh uh yeah, i have left out this the tubular secretion uh can be either active or or co transport so here any one of these uh, transport is going to take place it will be it going to be our active transport or the passive transport or the co transport which can takes place and the substance mainly secreted into the renal tubules so some of the substances like um, uh, hydrogen ion potassium ion then uh, ammonium uh, ammonium ion urea creatinine histamine so these the substances we should not be in the blood stream has been uh, reabsorbed or uh, sorry has been uh, secreted uh, inside your uh, nephron and which going to be excreted the tubular secretion occurs at the proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubules okay so these are the where your two uh, secretion occurs in the proximal as well as distal convoluted tubules right the so next is going to be our maturation reflex so maturation reflex in sense uh, urine excretion how your urine excretion is takes place how the urine excretion is takes place this is called as a maturation reflex so urination is the release of in from the urinary bladder through the urethra to the outside of the bowel so what happens uh, uh, till now we have discussed how the urine has been formed and the uh, uh, formed urine has been passed through the ure ureter and reaches the urinary bladder the urinary bladder already as i said it's an elastic uh, bag with uh, uh, with some nerve connection to the pon salivary vats uh, main center urination center which will takes your since you are uh, your uh, 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 maturation reflex to them this is also known as medically as maturation voiding uresis or early emiction okay in uh, in a healthy uh, human the process of urination is under voluntary control okay so, uh, for the and the next point itself we will be explaining in infants some elderly individual and those with the neurological injuries urination may occur as a reflex okay so in uh, grown up adults it's going to be our voluntary in action in infants and in uh, most in uh, most of the animals and elderly individuals then uh, some defects in the nerve defect these are going to be the uh, maturation is going to be a reflex which is not under our well, it's involuntary in action physiologically urination involves the coordination between central autonomic and somatic nervous system so completely uh, all the nervous system will be acting towards this uh, uh, process maturation process which will gives the information uh brain actually from the diagram you can see you can able to see uh, this is going to be your urinary bladder uh, where your urine is going to be collected by a tube just like a how horn has been mentioned it's going to be a ureter which enters the urinary bladder uh, what happens the, the urine will be get uh, filled in the urinary bladder uh, till it reaches a threshold uh, point that's going to be a stretch receptor you can find out the receptor which is called a stretch receptor here this stretch receptor will withstand till the maximum stretch happens immediately it reaches the threshold 
what happened the stretch re- uh, stretch receptors going to take the information through a sensory efferent nerve to the spinal cord and from that spinal cord it goes to the uh, brain stem brain stem is going to be your through medullary reaches your pons cerebelli where a uh, maturation center is present and the parasympathetic uh, ganglia which is present the nerve impulse stimulates the concentration of the muscle so bladder is made up of your muscle elastic muscle okay what happens uh, from the uh, pon cerebelli the information will be carried to the uh, sphincter muscle you can able to see that i uh, the diagram is mentioned these two are sphincter muscles these two are sphincter muscle we called it that two sphincter muscle in each and every uh, uh, outlet especially in the anus as well as in the urethra we are going to have two sphincter muscles which we called as uh, internal sphincter muscle and as well as the external sphincter muscle so what happen as soon as if you get information from the brain uh, your urine will uh, the urine will touches your internal sphincter muscle and immediately it gives the uh, urinate urinating feeling to the person but the external sphincter uh, internal sphincter muscle is always in involuntary action it is not in under uh, under the person control whereas the external sphincter muscle is under the person control if uh, if the upon the situation and the environment the person has to take the decision urine reaches the external sphincter muscle and uh, he, uh, the pincer muscle is under the control of that person so he, uh, he can urinate when you want to uh, excrete the urine that too for a, uh, a limited time period if the bladder is contained because the uh, even if the external sphincter muscle is under our control uh, the urine uh, filtration process will be taking place continuously and the bladder will start filling up uh, beyond the threshold level and uh, at this uh, excretic stage without your control the urine urination will be happen so this is the main uh, uh, what is that uh, nervous system and uh, reflex mainly its reflex will be uh, plays a major role in the ejection of your of our urine okay so it, there are two phases in the uh, maturation reflex uh okay before that maturation is a fundamental of a uh, spino spino bulbo spinal reflex spino bulbo spinal reflex which facilitate and inhibits the higher brain center such as pon maturation center i uh, just i told that uh, uh, the urinary center which is present the pon cerebelli that's what is called as a pontain matur- uh, maturation center where uh, it going to give the information to urine and uh, it gives the information to the brain that the person has to urinate the lower urinary tract has two uh, discrete phase of activities one is going to phase one is going to be a storage phase and phase two is going to void phase so storage phase is the phase where your uh, urine is going to be stored in the urinary bladder but voiding phase is going to be excretion of your urine the state of the reflex system is dependent on both the consciousness signal from the brain and the firing rate of the sensory fiber from the bladder the urethra now we are going to see the uh, two uh, phases one is going to be a storage phase and other one is going to be a void phase the storage phase uh, the internal urethral sphincter what is internal urethral sphincter muscle remains tense and the uh, dictus muscle acts by a sympathetic stimulation where the ovating phase the parasympathetic plays a major role in the ovating phase parasympathetic stimulation causes the uh, dictus muscle to contract and the internal uh, urethral sphincter muscle to relax the external urethral sphincter is under somatic control and it's continue and it's consciously uh, relaxed during the maturation so we going to relax and it's under under our control and we going to relax that uh, uh, external sphincter muscle and we pass on the in uh, freely without any difficulties we should not do not any difficulties while urinating uh, our urine uh, next we going to see the uh, important function of our kidney uh, kidney performs a several 
uh, hemostatic homeostatic function such as one is going to perform several homeostatic functions where uh, it going to maintain the volume of the extracellular fluid then maintaining the ionic balance in the intracellular fluid excellence in the extracellular fluid then maintain the ph and the osmotic concentration of the extracellular fluid and it's very very important thing it point function is it excretes the toxic metabolic uh, by products such as urea ammonia and the uric acid so yeah uh, uh, it secretes uh, as see the ph level is going to be the urine of the ph the ph level of this is going to be in acid state that's what we call it as a uric so till this the excretory system of our body will get up uh, i think uh, athena sir right ah uh, sir the today session has been over yeah, okay okay sir okay sir then we we okay. continue to work okay we will continue tomorrow uh, okay okay, okay sir. Sir. thank you thank you thank you thank you